Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the AEW Report. I am the Super Pro Todd Black and you, wow, it's been quite a week in AEW Wrestling, hasn't it? Because this week from Dynamite and Rampage, we had Grand Slam and then on Saturday, Collision was very, very cool. So we have a lot to talk about including some bad stuff sadly, but we'll start with a positive, Eddie Kingston. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our own Eddie Kingston is finally a world champion. You love to see it. You really, really do. And hey, that was a really good match against Claudio Castagnoli. And it kicked off Grand Slam. I mean, it got right into the epicness. And I, I really, really appreciated that. Uh, the match was just hard hitting. It felt very old school. Eddie and Claudio both playing tributes to Japanese legends. And a certain Japanese legend actually told Eddie Kingston to do the power bomb to finish off Claudio. And he did just that. And the reaction from the crowd, Eddie was just so emotional, even thanking the crowd for being there and for him for this moment. And, and let's let's just be honest here. If anyone, if anyone doubts the importance of AEW, you only need to point to Eddie Kingston to show how it's changed lives. In 2020, Eddie Kingston was about to end his wrestling career. The pandemic had crushed him. He was financially devastated he was selling his ring attire and autographs whatever he could do to pay bills and make house payments and he was about to he was about to stop he was about to stop doing what he loved and then he got the call from AEW did the open challenge against Cody Cody Rhodes and the rest is history AEW changed that man's life and now he is financially stable living his best life and now a world champion, a double champion, when you include the New Japan Strong uh, Never Openweight Champion. So now, two belt Eddie, epic picture that was. Uh, and that was just the start of this week, wrestling-wise. And I, I, while Rampage, well, actually, uh, uh, yeah, all, all three shows delivered. I'm just going to be honest here. Uh, Rampage was the weakest to me, but, you know, that was just because of the number of matches they had, I would say. But they still delivered on many, many matches. Uh, going back to Dynamite really quick, we had the uh, the women <laughs> the women's match between Tony Storm and Soraya was very, very interesting, including the very memeable moment <laughs> of Tony uh, <laughs> slapping people with shoes and then kissing Soraya. Uh, not surprised that Soraya won, but uh, I did appreciate Tony coming out to the black and white uh, <laughs> noir style uh, movie setting that was very very cool she is going full tilt on this character and everyone is loving it and rightfully so we also had the uh, of course let's just get right to it John Moxley versus Ray Phoenix look <laughs> the match was good it really was and the ending is everyone what everyone wants to talk about and that's fine because John Moxley did get hurt thankfully based on reports it was only a small concussion and which you never want to see. Concussions, as we all know, are bad. <laughs> they are very, very bad. But thankfully, it wasn't something worse. There was talks about, you know, stingers, something like him being totally knocked out cold and whatever. Uh, there's being there's blame being thrown around. Some blame the Phoenix, some are blame uh, Rick Knox. It's it's still a tenuous situation. But if we're being completely honest here. It could have been so much worse, and we are—we all should be grateful it wasn't worse. That Mox is doing okay based on all reports, and uh, Tony Khan, Renee, uh, Blackpool Combat Club, all were checking on Moxley after the incident after the show. So, if something worse had happened, we would have heard about it right now. I know this isn't what people wanted. Uh, it was very obvious going in Moxley was going to win against Ray Phoenix, but this could be a very small, small blessing in disguise. Ray Phoenix is an incredible competitor. You know, he's one of the best luchadors in the world by far. And technically, story-wise, it actually does make sense that he would have be beat he would have beaten Moxley because of what happened before All In. And so if I'm Tony Khan, which I'm not, but I'd like to work for him, available Tony, uh, I would have Ray Phoenix just doing, like, I would have him, I'd have him go up against every high flyer they got, every luchador they got, including his own brother eventually, and just make an absolute spectacle of his title reign. Because obviously that would be totally different from what they would have done with John Moxley. And hey, at least Moxley did get some title defenses in before this injury. And if I can be completely honest here, while I would never, I never wish injury upon anyone, this could be a blessing for Moxley because this could be his chance to finally have a vacation. <laughs> 
<laughs> the man is the workhorse. I mean, we all love Elliot Rich Cassidy, but Moxley is the true workhorse of AEW. He has been since basically day one. And the only times he's taken time off was because of injury or when he needed to get himself right in terms of his addiction issues, which we all supported and praise him for. Uh, that that that's that takes real guts right there. That's real strength to be willing to acknowledge and you need help of that sector of your life and then go and do it. So he needs a vacation. So if this concussion, if even if it's only for like a month or so, gets him out and you know helps him out, we're all for it, or I'm all for it at least. And I hope you are too, because again, the man just needs a rest. He's even said he's got like terrible arthritis. Give the man a break. So. Uh, the main event, of course, was Samoa Joe versus Maxwell Jacob Freeman, uh, MJF. And that was really, really good. About 20-minute bat- bout, if I remember correctly. And uh, that <laughs> I wasn't sure how it was going to end. Like, again, right now, it has never been more debate when MJF is going to lose the title. And so you, you had to wonder, would it be Joe? It wouldn't have been wrong if it was Joe, because Joe's great. But would it be Joe? Would they delay it a little longer? Are they going to keep this going? Sure enough, not only did he win, he won by choking out uh, Joe illegally. And then Adam actually helping him do it. But remember, he's not just a scumbag, he's our scumbag. Also, for everyone who's saying that, hey, AEW is dying, uh, AEW uh, Grand Slam Dynamite basically had a million viewers that night. Highest in six months. So yeah, they're doing just fine. Uh, Rampage had some good matches, but the biggest one was, of course, the Hung Bucks. Can I say that? Can we legally say that? I can say Hung Bucks, right? Can I? Okay, if I can't say Hung Bucks, just keep bleeping me out while you say Hung Bucks, okay? Yeah, just when I keep saying Hung Bucks, just bleep it out, blur me out, whatever you need to. So yeah, the uh, Young Bucks and Hangman, Hung Bucks, uh, faced Brian Cage in the Gates of Agony for the Ring of Honor World Trios title. World six man titles and they won and I think that was a good move because that just A that brings attention to Ring of Honor which they I we all know they need and Brian Cage Gates of Agony honestly there wasn't anyone else who really could have taken the titles from them so this helps out everyone plus it builds up the Hangman Swerve feud which will of course be uh, punctuated at Wrestle Dream then on a collision, we had multiple great moments, not the least of which was uh, Andrade Alidolo versus Jay White in a very fun, almost 20-minute match. And, like, Bullet Club Gold, wow, like, they're just owning that show. And I don't know what, what they're going to do with Andrade next, outside of his next match with Juice Robinson. But if this is the chance to bring an LFI, do it. I could I could totally see LFI versus Bullet Club Gold at Wrestle Dream or building it up to full gear, you know, there's there's potential here, but they need to do something quick because they can't just keep, you know, dangling Andrade around, you know. And then uh, the main event was the uh, Texas Death Match between Brian Danielson and Ricky Starks. Thankfully, Brian did not get injured. <sighs> Thank you. Uh, seriously, we were all wonders. Like, you're doing this like 10 days before, you know, you're about to do a pay-per-view and you're going to do a Texas death match. Now, the strat match was better, but I also think that's just because of the nature of the strat match where, like, the weapon is right there the whole time. So that was a very fun main event. Something I know a lot of people appreciate was also the Julia Hart focus in the last week in which we had uh, her beating Sky Blue on Grand Slam Rampage and then beating Kira Hogan on... uh, Collision, and now it's going to be her versus Chris Statlander at Wrestle Dream. Speaking of Wrestle Dream, we also have confirmation of the Righteous going up against Better Than You, Bay Bay, uh, for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Titles. And in a match I totally did not see coming, we are going to get Eddie Kingston putting up the Ring of Honor World Title and the New Japan Strong Never Open White Title against Shibata. Oh, that's going to be good. Seriously, I think that's really going to be good. So yeah, there was a, it was a big week for AEW. There was a lot going on, and there's teases, teases of other things going on. And I know a lot of you want to talk about a certain other thing that happened with a other company that could affect AEW. I will be talking about that, but in a later video, we're still waiting for some fallout to potentially happen. Okay, so. With that, it's been a great week for AEW. And next week is going to be the build-up to Wrestle Dream, which, again, is on October 1st, Seattle, Washington. It's looking to be a really big show. 
So I'm, I'm loving this card. I really, really am. So definitely make sure to put that on your calendar so you can watch it. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, AEW is the home of professional wrestling and, pos and not only the greatest wrestling promotion in North America, but possibly the world. And you might be thinking, but isn't there other wrestling I can watch? Is there, though?